It might be Super Bowl week, but that doesn't mean we can't hit you with Monday's NBA best bets, your player props, everything you need to know to tackle today's slate. No one better to do it with than Mr. Brian Matthews, a.k.a. B. Matt, a.k.a. the prop master himself. Brian, hope you had a good weekend. Hope you enjoyed, uh, maybe not enjoyed, but got through a weekend without football. And thanks for hopping on the show. Hey, appreciate you having me. I, I enjoy coming on because each time I get on here, you give me a new nickname I get to take out. So uh, the more you'll have me on, man, the more arrows I've got in my quiver. So uh, so let's get this thing rolling. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, you're really putting the pressure on me. I'm going to have to come up with a new one every, <laughs> every show now. <laughs> really, really backing myself into a corner here. We, uh, we, we, we had a, a less than ideal day uh, on Friday. I mean, that's more so just because Monday we came out fired up and we, we were both up like three units uh, on the day. Not, not an awful day, um, but we, we want to be, be well into the green. Just taking a look at what we did on Friday. You did hit on uh, Scary Terry's over 21 and a half points. Uh, mm. Malik Monk decided to shoot like 20% from the field. So yeah. that's pretty rough. Uh, James Harden didn't even, didn't even make it a sweater, honestly. Um, on his on his triple double, uh, but I got look. I, I took Kings minus two and a half, thinking there was going to be no Halliburton. He ends up playing. They get smoked. Um, and Anthony Edwards, uh, I'd like to have a word with him uh, because we, you know, we. I took him over three and a half threes. Uh, he had been lights out. Had hit in like seventy percent of his last like ten games, something like that. Quite literally, has shot two of twelve since I took that bet from three. So. Um, to anyone else who's been trying to tail or, or, or bet on the threes, my bad. I honestly that that's got to be on me at this point. Um, but we're we're gonna bounce back today, so it doesn't really matter. That's right, man. That's right. Hey, look, when you bet threes, you know the volatility, right? You live by the three, die yeah. by the three. So <clears throat> you get those at plus money. Those are fun ones to chase down. But you know, I, I guess the only saving grace when you lose one of those is seeing a guy took twelve threes, right? You're like, look, the volume was there, right? So I feel better about it. You know? So I think the yeah. volume was there that night, just to you know, to give you some reassurance. Yeah, volume wasn't there. Uh, volume was there. <laughs> just every, nothing else was there, which is kind of the problem. Um, <laughs> let's let, let's get into what the people came here for, though. Your best bets for Monday. We have a a, a pretty juicy slate. Got some interesting, you know, revenge games and just a, a lot of teams changing with Kyrie's trade going down. We'll talk about that. A little later, but why, why don't you get us started? Hit me with your best bets for tonight. First bet of the day, I'm going to go with Jordan Poole. You know, I think tonight might be a pool party. Steph Curry's out. I think we've heard now it might be at least you know two, three weeks. So someone's going to need to step up in his absence. All right, here's the thing, though. I took the prop last night. It was at 22 and a half points, so I took the over. I'll play on here the over of 23 and a half, which is where it currently sits, because no one can get that 22 and a half number anymore. So first prop, I like Jordan Poole. It's it's going to be a high-scoring game with the Thunder, <clears throat> not too much defense. You know, if you look at the spread, it's actually pretty close, and you've got almost 240 points on the projected total. So I think we see Jordan Poole aggressive today, and I wouldn't be surprised if his line starts at 24 and a half, 20, you know, 23 and a half, 24 and a half by the time next game comes around. I honestly, re respect on taking the 23 and a half, not the 22. Um, I am right there with you. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll go ahead and spoil it. That was one of my best bets. Uh, for tonight as well. I, I do want to ask you, um, I'm sure you read the, the Steph injury report as well, the, the tweet that Shams sent out. Uh, over under three and a half words that you understood uh, from a medical aspect there. Because instead of just saying like high ankle sprain, they said yeah. every sort of like ligament. And I was like, all right, I don't, I don't know what any of this means. Yeah, so I had someone with me who, who might have some medical background, or at least a, a buddy of mine who, you know, who had gone through med school. So I may have shot something over to him. But the initial glance, yeah, there's maybe over three and a half. Maybe, you know, I might look for, you know, some arbitrage there and go under five and a half, somewhere in the middle. But uh, that's probably where I fell. Yeah, that was uh that that was tough on the eyes to try to to try to get through. Okay, so we got Jordan Poole over points on one. What's your other pick? All right, so look, this one, I'm, I'm looking at the Bulls-Spurs game. You know, looking at a guy that used to play for San Antonio and a former Trojan, so can't go wrong here for me. DeMar DeRozan, I'm going to go over 25 and a half points. Look, the last three games uh, against San Antonio, he's gone for, I think, 28, 35, and 33. Now, I might be one or two off here, but he's averaging over 30 points, you know, this season and the last against his former team. You know, 
the Spurs are one of the weakest in the positions at defending DeMar. You know, or pardon me, defending right. uh, his position. So, look, they give up a lot of points. There's not going to be a lot of defense. I'll go with a slight revenge narrative here with DeMar over 25 and a half points. That's fair. And, and again, we'll, 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 we'll touch on that a little later. There's just sure. a, a lot of interesting storylines um, going into a – going into this tonight's slate i, I yeah. guess of you know team shifting and you get some revenge games and uh and things like that but yeah any, anytime you get a, a high scoring uh high scoring threat against the spurs defense it's probably worth taking and uh my sources are telling me you have a third pick for today before we even get to the bonus so lay it on me yeah hey look your sources are correct uh, you know i, I like the sources. <laughs> your sources are me like, hey, we're gonna go like, we're, we got two chalk guys right uh, well a little bit chalk i mean demar's chalk you know jordan pool all right yeah we'll put him in there all right so i'm gonna go with another warrior player prop and uh this one is still not available on DraftKings or fandle for some reason at some point they're gonna have to roll it out but i'm gonna go dante divincenzo over 17.5 points rebounds and assists so I think this is a number where the books haven't caught up, caught up yet. So when Steph Curry's out, you know, in four of his last five, he's cleared this number by at least six. You know, and, and he's gone over points in, in two of the last five games. He's gone well over rebounds in a few of the others and well over assists in a few of the others. So, you know, it's one of those lines where you kind of do have the assurity of, look, if he goes off on the rebounding end and isn't scoring as many points or the assists, you know, at least we can kind of have that catch all. So. I think he's had 24 plus PRA in his last two games. Again, I love the matchup with the Thunder. A uh, nice pace up spot. So, yeah, I'll go with DiVincenzo as the third pick. Okay, interesting. And starting to see a little bit of a trend here. We got a couple different bets on one game. Uh, you know what that leaves the potential for? Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> we'll get to we'll get to my two for today. Uh, one of them is going to be pretty short. I took the same thing you did. Um, we're on the same page. Jordan Poole over 23 and a half points. I'm going to go with you again. I got it at 22 and a half last night as well, but we're not doing that. That's unfair on the show. So we're going to take him at over 23 and a half. Best number to get that is minus 140 on DraftKings. Just in general, just the, the, like you said, there's might not be a lot of defense in this game. Uh, he averages 28 points per game without Steph in it. He has hit this line in 12 of those 15 games that Steph has missed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do want to swing this to you, too. Um, you know, we I, I ended up taking the, the Warriors to cover minus, I think it was minus four and a half last week against the Thunder. So they, they just played against each other. But it was a close game. Now, no Steph. The line's at plus three and a half for OKC. Yeah. Maybe buy a couple of points? Or are you just brave enough to, to, to also combine and, you know, take Thunder plus three and a half? No, nah, look, I, I think the Thunder keep this one close. You know, but look, we've seen in the NBA, I mean, what can happen, right? These money lines can be, you know, interesting uh, to say the least. But uh, no, I do like them. I think that, yeah, you look at the line, you know, it was a pretty close game when they had Steph. And if you look at their offensive efficiency, they go from top 10 in the NBA to bottom 10 in the NBA without Steph on the floor. So it's definitely something to keep, you know, to, to keep an eye on and, and be mindful of. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Thunder come out and, and actually get the game tonight. Yeah, no, it's, uh, again, it, it's always a weird spot, and you got to be careful. It's a dangerous spot to be at when a star player goes out, just having guys stepping up uh, in his place. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Poole put up, like, 45 today. And, you know, like, uh, one B-man said, have a pool party. Yeah. Uh, bet number two, I am taking, call me a sucker, I don't care. I'm taking it anyway. I'm taking the Cavs minus two against the Wizards. You get that at minus 104 at Unibet. Look, when, when I looked at this line at first, I'm like, all right, what, what am I missing here? Like, this is, this is clearly a trap. Uh, Cavs played last night. Wizards did not. The Wizards, uh, over the weekend, in case you missed it, became something like the first team in the last 25 years to blow 20-point leads in back-to-back -back games on back-to-back -back nights. Like, yeah. they, they embarrassed themselves. And look, yeah. the Cavs played last night. But I don't really care. Like, no Kuzma tonight again for the Wizards. I, th this seems too low for me. I, I love the Cavs minus two here. Hey, I, look, you know, Cleveland guy, right? I, I like the pick. Nice the switch, Cavs, by the way. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'll send you a link off, you know, when we get off camera here. But, uh, okay. yeah, I like the Cavs. You know, I think um, I get it. They're on the, you know, second end of a back-to-back. -back, and people might be banking on the fact that the Wizards have been embarrassing themselves and might want to come out and, you know, 
put at least three quarters together. I mean, because if they can do more than two, you know, they got a shot. Um, I mean, they've looked decent to get out of these games. You know, they've looked like a good team and just collapsed. Now, I know Kuzma was injured last game, right? So that's that obviously is it's going to hurt your offense. But, you know, people got to be banking on them to bounce back. But, you know, the Cavs are a solid team. Rubio's out uh, tonight. You know, Karis Levert's questionable. So it sounds like he will probably play. And at some point, Donovan Mitchell's, you know, 20 shots a game. Some of them have to fall in. So I like it. Yeah, I saw, saw a lot of uh, Donovan Mitchell parlay busters. Uh, last yeah. night, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So I, it's, uh, I'm hoping for a turnaround here. It looks like Bradley Beal's probably going to play. He, he, he participated in shoot around today, so he's probably good yeah. to go. But again, I don't, honestly, I don't care if I'm a sucker here. Like I, this, this is too good to be true type of thing. Right. Hey, All I right. Like so it, let's man. go ahead. No, I said, I like it. I like the no. pick. So let's, do we jump to the bonus or are we going to, to review the, the, you know, the most popular bets of the week? You let me know. Let's, uh, let, let's go to your bonus first and then we'll review the, the right. popular bets for tonight. Give me, give me your bonus pick. All right. So, look, I'm going to stay with the Cavs. You kind of teed me up right there. I'm going to go with a big man, Jared Allen. I'm going to go, look, Jared Allen, he is, would be going on. Now, it's been kind of rocky with him and Evan Mobley there. You're not sure who's getting the rebounds and who's getting the points lately. Mobley's been doing more of the scoring, but I like Jared Allen, double-double. It's minus 110 at FanDuel, so we don't have the most amazing odds in the world. But he had 14 rebounds against the Wizards earlier this year. He's gone over, I think, 10.5 in his last four meetings against them. He seems to have Daniel Gafford's number. That's who he's going to be facing tonight. So, you know, I like uh, I like Jared Allen, double-double. And, you know, if you're looking for something in the plus money, you know, maybe over 10, you know, 10.5 rebounds, I think is at plus 110. So that might be another way to go as well. Yeah, and I mean, look, it's not like, you know, the Wizards exactly have the biggest team either outside of Daniel Gafford. Like, might not get any Anthony Gill tonight. Like, it's just, th- yeah. this is a good spot to pick um, for Jared Allen. All right, so you have your four picks for Mr. Right. B-Matt. You have my two picks, tail however you want. I suggest you listen to him a little more than me, but also all of our bets are going to hit tonight. All right, Brian, we are in an interesting spot here as we go through our top five most popular NBA props for the day, according to DraftKings. Again, we're going to give you the odds for these, but make sure you're using our grid to make sure you get the best odds for whatever book you decide to use tonight. We're in an interesting spot, I say, because a lot of what we liked is a lot of the interesting prop bets that everyone else likes. And... Uh Interestingly enough, one of my picks, the Cavs minus two, um, which was two and a half at the time that I, I, I grabbed these stats, but 78% of the bets, according to the according to DraftKings, was back in the Cavs. So we're riding with the public today, um, which does not give me a great feeling. Yeah, but right. as always, I'm going to give you top five prop bets. You're going to tell me outside of the two that you picked, um, because there are oh. two that you picked here already um, All right. that you like. I'm scared now. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh yeah we're we're in an interesting spot here for sure. All right. Um. So number one, Jordan Poole over twenty two and a half. Again, that's what the line opened at at minus one fifty. Demar okay. Derozan over twenty five and a half at minus one forty five. Then you get Jason Tatum over twenty nine and a half points minus one thirty. Laurie Markkinen over two and a half three pointers made at minus one fifty five. And Nikola Vucevic, good friend of yours, to record a double double at minus 255. Okay, so we have those three. Again, you're not allowed to pick the two that you already fully advertised on the Mm -hmm. show. What do you like? What do you not like? What are you kind of scratching your head at? Yeah, look, so I I like Tatum. Here's the thing that kind of worries me right now. We don't know if if Jalen Brown is playing. And if you look at the last game uh, between Detroit and Boston, you're like, yeah, this is a great bet, right? I mean, Detroit has no defense. I mean, they don't don't play much defense. We've seen that. So the, the only thing that would worry me, right, is if there's a blowout, right? And and we see, you know, Jason Tatum leave the game with 25, 26, 27 points, right? Which which could happen. So I think the matchup's fantastic, right? But I look at that spread and I go, all right, that that might worry me a little bit. So, you know, maybe water down, make it a part of a parlay or something. But um, okay. I think the matchup's great. Really, I'd like it if Jalen Brown sat, but he's questionable right now. His lines are still up, so it leads me to believe he might play. But, you know, don't want to look too far into that. So, Vucevic, it's a good matchup, man. I like it. You know, I, I like I said the other night, I don't love the value or lack thereof being at, you know, minus 200 if that's a, you know, a parlay piece or, or whatever it might be. But, you know, um, putting in that kind of money to win back $100, you know, isn't isn't my idea of uh, of a great bet. Uh, but and then Lori Markin, normally normally I wouldn't like 
happening against Dallas, right? Dallas is, mm. they've got good perimeter and wing defenders, but in the process of trading for Kyrie, you know, they, they're trading away Dinwiddie, but more importantly, as far as the defensive side of the ball, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, who's their primary ball defender. I mean, he's, you know, he's really good. He can, you know, match up against multiple guys. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of pieces and parts, you know, that are going to be keeping him on the defensive end. So I think Laurie can keep that streak going. I think he's hit that in what, seven or eight in a row, something like mm. that. So okay. I think he stays hot tonight. It's a, it's, it's a good transition to what I wanted to ask you about before we get here. You know, we, we talked about kind of an interesting slate to look at. You got the Clippers and Nets tonight, obviously no more Kyrie Irving. Um, mm-hmm. That line only at seven and a half in favor of, the Clippers, regardless of it being in Brooklyn, kind of just, again, the, you always have the factor of just that revenge. Okay, Kyrie Irving is annoying. We finally have him out of the locker room. Let's see how they come out and play. Um, you have DeMar DeRozan against his former team. Talk about the Mavs, a couple of different changes here, maybe to target that defense and honestly probably moving forward um, with how much worse it got. And obviously the Warriors with no Steph, at least for the foreseeable future, don't expect yeah. it to be too long. Um when when you're looking at just the the implications long term of that Kyrie trade, just just real quick, um, what do you is there anything specifically you're targeting defense on one end, offense on another end, or any players that you you expect to step up? Yeah, so I mean, like if you look right, Brooklyn. I mean, so I'm waiting and I'll be refreshing until they come out. But if you look at Brooklyn, right, like so you see this trade offer, you see the trade deadline, right? You see guys get traded or guys that are, you know, sat, you know, until the trade deadline at least is completed. So you don't risk injury, but that's some of the, that's some of the best prop betting that you can get, you know, cause you get to find guys that, you know, kind of fill an enormous hole, right. That don't normally get a lot of opportunities that are trying to make a name for themselves. So, you know, Cam Thomas, Edmund Summer, uh, two names on the nets that, that absolutely went berserk last game. I'll be waiting for them. They'll probably give the lines to us five minutes before tip off. But you know, I'll still of be course. scrolling. I think those are some guys to look at. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hang tight. You know, everyone talks about it. there's only one ball in Dallas. You know, it's like people act like Luca doesn't pass the ball. Yeah, it's so, so um, you know, but I, I am interested to see how that'll shake out, you know, how each of them kind of settles into that role. I think Luca's obviously the, the ball dominant one there, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what that turns out. And I think the Nets, man, if they give Cam Thomas some run, man, this kid can score. Mm. He's, he's a good player. So I'd like to see him start getting some more minutes. Moving forward, just bet the Nets team total over – or the, the, <laughs> the Nets uh, opponent team total under and the Mavs team total over and then also their opponent team total over as well because I don't know if we're going to see that much defense in Dallas um, yeah. moving forward. But – that's that's gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, make sure you're following the BMAT, the underscore BMAT on Twitter. Uh, he's scrolling five minutes before those game lines come out, so you don't have to. He's got your best bets. He's also gonna be on later this week your full Super Bowl preview for the huddle with Ross Tucker, Pat Mayo, and Pam Maldonado. Mm-hmm. Your best bets. I know he's got some up his sleeve, whether they be prop bets, anytime touchdowns, or what color Gatorade. Um, will be poured on. Not gonna, not gonna spoil any of those picks. But uh, Brian, I'll talk to you a little later next week or later this week, I should say. Some, uh, some NBA props, and uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit of a uh, Super Bowl as well. Hey, that sounds good. Appreciate you having me on, Matthias.